Hello guys, 5.3 update is around the corner. We got a lot of new information yesterday. I'm not gonna go into details in this video, but you can check out the Realm Warriors YouTube channels, Man with No Game 45, Man, and Game Time Gaming. They all have videos with the latest update news. Now, you know me. The thing I'm most interested in is the gear. And I'm gonna go through every single piece right now. And we have a lot. Black Dragon gear was reworked, kinda similar to the Shirai Ryu gear a few months back. And we have two new friendships, Sub-Zero and Jade. Which is kinda interesting because it's the first time we get two friendships and no brutality. Maybe they just, you know, ran out of brutalities or something. Anyway, let's check out the gear. I can't wait. And I think we should start with the Black Dragon Uncommon Pieces. First we have Black Dragon Sword. 20% chance to apply Bleed Fire Poison on combo enders. This is okay. I mean, it's good for a green piece, but 20% is not a lot. And then we have 30% of damage dealt to the opponent by dots is transferred to the user as health. Okay, this one is amazing. I really like this one. Very, very nice. And then we have Dragon Teeth. 50% critical attack damage boost when the user has less than 50% of health. Hmm. I mean, it used to have 75% critical damage at all times. So, it was better before. And then we have gain luck at the start of the match and on tag in for 15 seconds. Wow, that's insane. That's like the Widowmaker, but also at the start of the match. That's... I don't know what to say. It's maybe the best uncommon piece in the game? Okay, just, just give it to me. Give me this one maxed out and I will make a video. Alright, Cobra Boxing Gloves. 30% chance to apply slow on successful special one. That's very good. It's the first piece that gives slow on special one. I'm quite sure. And then we have 35% damage boost against enemies affected by stun or slow. Alright, that's okay, but not like super special. Anyway, I'm very surprised by the uncommon pieces. I think they're all very good. Amazing, actually. Now, let's move on to the rare pieces. Stone Fist Tremor Rare Piece. 20% chance to steal 5% of opponent's max power on successful combo ender. Um... There's a lot of pieces that have power steal on basic attacks and on combo enders. So to me, this is nothing special and it's only 20% on combo ender. It's gonna take a long time. Maybe if you combine all these gears together, that steals power and I actually tried that, but if not, then nothing special. And then we have user gain 5% special attack damage boost after performing any successful special, max 20%. Yeah, it's way too low. And then we have Tremor, 20% chance to apply stun on combo ender for 3 seconds. I say it again, 20% on combo ender is kinda low. And if you're unlucky, you won't even see a single stun for the whole battle. But if you do get lucky, then yes, awesome. I want this for every single character but unfortunately it's for Tremor only. Actually you have 20% chance of stun on combo ender and you have 20% chance to steal power on combo enders. Hmm, maybe it's a good combo. And then we have the maxed out ability. After 8 successful basic attacks incoming damage is reduced by 5%. Each basic attack on stunned opponents counts as 2, okay. Maximal damage reduction 40%. Resets up on users tag out. Okay, I like damage reduction, but this one is way too complicated and it resets up on tag out, so no, I don't think this one is any good. Next one, Scoundrel's Elbow Blades. 35% basic attack unblockable chance, very good, plus 5% additional chance for enemies affected by cripple or weaken. Okay, and this seems to be an accessory, so yes, please, I will accept this one. And then we have 
80% basic attack damage boost against opponents with less than 50% of health. Um, no. I mean, it's okay, but the Widowmaker have 80% basic attack damage boost all the time. It's not bad, but it's not super exciting. And then we have 20% chance to apply Curse on Block Break Attack. Alright, Curse is good, on Block Break Attack is good, 20% chance is not good, just my opinion. And the last rare, Nomad's Deadly Vapors, 70% chance to apply Poison on Users Tag-In. Okay, that's good. And then each successful combo ender has a 60% chance to apply its damage to the whole team. So it's the full damage of the combo ender to the whole team. Okay, that's incredible because I know how to do 300,000 on a combo ender and it's gonna deal 300,000 to the whole team. Alright, I have some ideas right now can't wait to get this one and the maxed out ability 40% damage boost against enemies affected by poison and also if users poison is resisted by the opponent there's a 40% chance that 40% damage of basic not base what base attack will be dealt to the opponent instead what does that mean is that like 40% of my base attack automatically like an extra hit or something i'm not sure let me know in the comments if you understand this now let's move on to the epics let's start with the psych bomb 30 percent chance to apply cripple on combo enders this used to be 40 percent chance to apply cripple on stun i think so it's changed i don't know it's better or not i think at least it should have been 50 percent but again, it's just my opinion. And then we have on tag in, Psych Bomb is tossed at the opponent, dealing 40% damage of base attack. So this actually used to be 400%, and then they nerfed it to 100%, and now they nerfed it to 40%. So if I spent money on this piece, I would not be happy right now. That's all I'm gonna say. And then on each Psych Bomb toss, there's an 80% chance to apply stun for 3 seconds. This is same as before, and pretty cool. And then the last one, gain power steal on basic attacks against crippled opponents. Hmm, I think maybe this is good. And it used to be 50% power cost reduction. I don't know which one is better, I think both are pretty good, honestly. Especially since it's guaranteed. And not like a 30% chance of 5%, no. This one is straightforward, power steal on all basic attacks. The end. And then we have Smuggler's Luck. 60% chance to gain luck after special 1. I think that's too low percent. Especially since we have pieces that gives 100% luck now. And then special attack deals 20% more damage. After each use, stacks up to 5 times. So that means 100% more damage. Which is cool. And then we have 10% chance to gain Dispel after a successful critical hit. Only 10% chance. This piece is not my favorite to be honest. Let's just move on to the next one. We have Kano's Brutality Epic Piece, Cybernetic Heart. Successful basic attacks have a 35% chance to heal 2% of users max health. You see, I don't like these pieces where you have a small chance to do something of small percentage, it's... It's just... Never mind. Next one, 35% incoming damage reduction when the user is below 60% of health. Okay, I like damage reduction, but some other pieces have higher damage reduction, like 40%, 50%. Again, never mind. Next one, Kano, 10% damage boost for each heal, stacks up to 5 times. It seems to be until the end of the battle. It's not gonna reset on tag out, so that's good. And Kano needs damage boost, so I guess it's good. But is it special like some other pieces? Like the Nunshaku Fireball? It's not. But maybe this last one might make up for it. 
regenerate 3 bars of power over 15 seconds below 60% health. Awesome. This is like the cool factor, but instead of 2 bars, it's 3 bars. And instead of 10 seconds, it's 15 seconds. So I think it's going to be the same speed. The 5 seconds extra is probably because there's one extra bar to fill up. Awesome. So overall, I would say this piece is not that great. Once you max it out and use it on MK11 Noob, then it becomes the best thing ever. Um, yeah, quite contradiction, right? And I don't know if this was unlimited before, or was it only one time before. At least now we can do it three times per battle. But the real question is, is it worth to max out this piece if you already have the cool factor? That's a tricky one. And the last one, Nomad's Buzzsaw. 40% chance to drain 10% of the opponent's max power on combo enders. Again, with the small percent chance to do something, yeah. Successful combo enders increase the max duration of every poison applied to the enemy by 20%. Okay, that's good. And then 40% chance to gain speed after successful power drain. So this used to be 50% chance to gain speed after critical hit. And now it's only after power drain. Okay, this piece has been nerfed. Like a lot, alright? And then Cabal on every successful special one, there's a 50% chance that toxin will be applied to the opponent. The toxin blocks one random equipment piece on the opponent and increases all incoming damage by 15%. Can stack three times. On opponent's tag out, all toxin stacks are removed and drain 60% of opponent's power. It sounds good, but I feel I have to test it out. And I'm actually gonna have to do special ones with Cabal. Usually I like to use a special two. So um, yeah, I have to test it out. And the last maxed out ability, gain two bars of power after your teammate dies. And this works with Noob's Shadow. It works with Dark Lord Kotal Khan, Oshtek Special 2. It's insane. But the problem is, it used to be unlimited. Now it's only two times per match. This piece got destroyed. Like seriously. Overall, I feel the epics are medium. Or maybe that's because I actually know what they could do before. So I'm not sure if I'm giving a fair review here. The rares, I think the two last ones are great. The first one was so-so. And the uncommon pieces were amazing. I love those. Now, I'm not finished. We still have two friendship sets to review. Let's start with Jade. Royal Guards Emerald Haze. 40% basic attack on blockable chance. Good. Or, hold on, is this accessory or weapon or... I'm not really sure. Um, okay, never mind. Apply cripple on opponent's tag in for 10 seconds. That's pretty cool. It's kind of like a reversed classic Liu Kang passive. And then we have Jade. Before tagging out, Jade has an 80% chance to perform an unblockable attack that removes all opponent's buffs and reset timer on all debuffs and dots applied to the opponent. Hmm. 80% is good. But what if they don't have any buffs? The reset timer on all debuffs? Okay, that's cool, but if I'm in a boss fight, then they don't have any dots. I don't know, it could be cool in like difficult tower battles, but again, I have to test it out. The last one, each time the opponent tries to apply a debuff to the user, there's a 65% chance the debuff will be resisted and bleed or poison is applied to the opponent. Okay, that's pretty cool because that's like 65% chance debuff resistance, which is very useful. Um, the bleed and the poison, it's cool but not super good maybe. And then we have the Royal Guard's Cowl. Gain power on tagging for 10 seconds, similar to uh, the Forbidden Book, which is nice. And then we have 60% chance to apply Oblivion on every third block break attack. No, that's gonna take forever. And it's only 60% chance, no. And then user special attack damage 
is increased by 5% for each active debuff. Maximum damage boost 30%. That's too low. I think the first one, gain power on tag in, is the only good one. It's very good, but the other ones, not really. Alright, Sub Zero's friendship. Cold hearted Ninja's Dark Creamancy. That's a long name. 50% chance to apply curse when hitting a frozen opponent. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then we have 60% opponent unblockable attack chance reduction while he's affected by curse or a death mark. Hmm, there's pieces that do the same thing without any requirement, so no, I don't like this one. And then we have Sub Zero have a 70% chance to escape opponent's special attack. Okay, I don't have to read anything else. That's it. That's awesome. I love that. 70% chance. That's pretty good. And the clone shatters at a hit, dealing damage and leaving the opponent frozen at the end. Wow, I like this one. This is gonna look so cool. And then each successful critical hit reduces the damage received from the opponent by 2%, max reduction 40%, resets upon tag out. Anything that resets on tag out, it's just annoying, alright? And the last piece, Cold Hearted Ninja's Cruelty. 25% critical hit chance. I wish it was 35%. And then 100% chance to apply Death Mark on Special 2. Hmm, it could be useful. I mean, we have Shinteo Malice. We have another epic piece with Death Mark, but... Yeah, I think could be useful. And then the last one. Each next critical hit deals 10% more damage than the previous. Stacks up to 4 times. I feel we have like a million of these kind of pieces. I feel like I'm kind of repeating myself. And then reset some tag out. Alright. Um, listen, if I'm sounding negative, it's because I'm looking at it from my perspective of me spending money on the gear because you all know I like to max out gear and that costs actually a lot of money so I have the right to be a little bit picky for the money I spend but I appreciate the efforts from the developing team and this update seems to be a very positive one in my opinion and the crystals, the sellback crystals, that's just amazing I'm gonna cover that in another video but for now, what do you think about the gear? What do you think about the reworked gear or the friendship ones? Let me know in the comments. I hope you liked this video. Take care. See you next time.